I hope I. Uh oh. thrilled that y'all are here and to be part of this conversation to listen into y'all so thank you again but before I introduce our speakers and they dive into the conversation I want to welcome those of us here and then also online we have people join us online as well so for those online please feel free to use the live chat to engage with one another and also to ask questions and as we wrap up our discussion, we will do our best to get to as many <laughs> questions as we possibly can. And for those of you who don't want to miss the other forums, do not worry. They are all being recorded, and you will be able to watch them for a week after today. So just save that unique link that we sent you, and you can access those. And now, <laughs> I'd like to introduce Mara Award recipient, Dr. Arlene Ford. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Arlene is the founder of the Equity Inquiry Project, where she consults with organizations, educational institutions, nonprofits, corporations, and their leaders to build capacity around equity, inclusion, and organizational change. In her spare time, I don't know where that is, <laughs> she travels nationally to speak on the importance of equity and inclusion and has also taught graduate level courses to education leaders on equity. Also joining us today is someone who helped make this forum possible, Latanya Donaldson. Of, yay! Yes. <laughs> yes. Of Hilltop Holdings, Latanya is the Vice President, Director of Multicultural Lending with Prime Lending. She brings to this role over 20 years of experience in multicultural community lending, has recently launched a multicultural lending internship program, specifically serving students attending HBCUs. Latanya, thank you for making this happen, and I will pass it off to you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We appreciate the introduction. Thank and you. we thank you for the opportunity uh, to support this necessary work. So I just want to tell you a little bit about Hilltop Holdings. We're a publicly traded financial services company with three operating companies. Uh, that includes Plains Capital Bank, Prime Lending, and Hilltop Securities. Our organization is proud to support uh, the T Texas Women's Foundation and its work to empower strong women to make a positive difference in, in the society. Hilltop has deep roots in Texas and has grown to include a diverse work workforce of nearly 5,000 employees in offices across our company. Our family of companies reflects the populations and values of the communities we serve and we are committed to encouraging and celebrating a diverse and inclusive culture. We establish a women's momentum program that supports the empowerment growth, development of women throughout our companies in order to advance their careers. As a key goal of, women, of the women's momentum program is to encourage community involvement throughout the markets we serve. Through, our organ through organizations like the Texas Women's Foundation, we, actively, we are actively working to support women and girls through advocacy, promoting financial literacy, and advancing positive economic change. This work is important to me, as it is important to Hilltop, and we're just grateful to be here. So without further ado, mm -hmm. Dr. Ford, thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much. Thank you to Hilltop for sponsoring this uh, session. Thank you for all of you who work here. Um, thank you for uh, Texas Women's and Lisa, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Well, I'll just jump right in with the first question. Okay. Now, on the first question, I wanna start off by talking about your leadership journey. Mm -hmm. Tell us, how you started the work in equity and inclusion? It's a very good question. Um, so I think you could consider me one of those typical immigrant success stories, right? I was a nerd, a little bit of a nerd, and uh, had the privilege of going to college, um, did very well, um, and uh, got into a good law school. I wanted to be a lawyer, um, then got into a good law firm, 
and I wanted to give back. And so while volunteering, um, I worked with some middle school students, and my middle school students could not read, even though they were really, really smart. Um, and so I wanted to learn more, and what I did, so I went back to school, and I learned a couple of things. One is that, and, and if you live in the US, you know this, right? But I didn't really, that there is a kind of race-based um, access to resources in this country. It's something that's a little bit um, connected to our past history, um, but I learned also that uh, what our past, what our past says, it has something to do with where we go to next, but we get to choose what that next is. We get to choose how we use that information. So I wanted to be part of the story of choosing something better. Right. So that's right. it. You know. So you focus your work in education. Tell us why. why did so I focused, I started working um, in education because that was where I saw the problem first, right? Mm -hmm. Where I saw racial uh, inequality. It was interesting to work with really good people, um, but then to still have results that were not satisfactory for a lot of kids, especially kids of color. And it's complicated, right? Um, you know, when you look at schools, uh, it's complicated because it's about low resources. But sometimes it's also about us having good intentions that don't match up with um, the results that we want to have. Um, and it, in, we do things sometimes that are the opposite of what our good intentions are. Uh, like in schools, for instance, we um, over-discipline, and that has a chilling effect on education, which is the opposite of what you want. In workplaces, we know in workplaces that diversity and inclusion is um, something that creates uh, productivity and creativity, and yet we don't foster that. So, um, going through that space, understanding uh, that we need to make some changes is really important. Um, and I am ever hopeful. Do you think that's a, a fear-based? When you know when you talk about diversity and inclusion in the workplace? Yes. Do you think it? Do you think it's fear-based of why we're not embracing it? I mean, you you said in your comments that we would all benefit from it, but yet we still we don't do it. So where I, do you think that comes from? Is it? Oh, do you based? think it's based on fear? I think it. There. I think that we have a history that we haven't come to face with, and I do think that there is some fear that's associated with that, um, and I think that. Um, we have the capacity to actually overcome that. You know, one of the things that I know about Americans is that um, we're survivors, we're resilient, we have the capacity to grow. We see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we also have the capacity to move through the fear and the discomfort of working through what it is that's keeping us from doing the work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the theme of this forum is you advocate. Yes. Can you tell me about the importance of advocating? Yes and the different ways we, we can all advocate for equity and inclusion within our networks. I think advocacy is critical, 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 critical. Um, and those of us who have power, those of us who are in leadership positions, we have a bigger responsibility to advocate. Um, listen, all of us are human beings, right? All of us, I don't, regardless of who you are, all of us have the right to be valued. All of us have the right to be treated fairly. Um, and so the people, those of us who are in power positions who have more access to that also have the responsibility to bring those of us along who are not in that space, who don't have that ability. Um, and, and let me say, by the way, that all of us have the capacity to advocate, right? I can advocate for myself, and I can always advocate for someone else. The how we do it, of course, is important. Um, there are three ways, there's at least three things you can do to be a good advocate. One is you can learn. When you're talking about equity and inclusion, there's a lot to learn about how it is, why it is. 
Um, and I think it's important for us to commit to a learning, even when it's uncomfortable. Um, we can use our voices. And for me, using our voices is multi, it's a multiple part thing, you know. It's about speaking up, it's about listening, um, and sometimes it's about making the space for other people to speak up. And then you can move into doing something different and something better. Absolutely. You know, I yeah. often say, you know, uh, uh, when you talk about the responsibility, yes. you know, I think about me and my role. I didn't get here from just being Latanya. I, right. I stood on the shoulders of other great women, yes. you know, in, in this space. So I think it's very important that um, we tell our story. Uh, because again, we are, we're, we're not just in, in these positions just to be here, but I think for me, it's my responsibility to bring someone along with me. Absolutely, and I agree with you. So now you are also working within organizations. Yes. Um, tell us the difference in education and educational and organizational systems and how you approach, uh, approach work differently to make an impact. It's a very good question. Um, so uh, I, um, when you think about organizations versus education, um, what is different is how uh, uh, inequality, let me say inequality shows up. If you're looking at education, right, um, when things are not happening satisfactory, th the, the things that show up are things like over-disciplining, under-resourcing students. Um, it might be a lack of diversity of the materials that students have access to. Um, when you're looking at organizations, um, it looks a little different. Um, it could be a lack of diversity. It could be unequal pay. Um, it could be um, lack of access to promotion. The, so the why, those are the why of doing equity. Um, it looks a little bit different. But at the end of the day, um, the work is about uh, working with people. When I um, uh, work, I attempt to create spaces for leaders and organizations to build their capacity around equity, right? Um, and ultimately, the whys are really important. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to build a we uh, the world is about we, it's to build connections between people. Um, you know, when I work with folks and we look at the data that might not be satisfactory, um, and then you make the connections and you see people make connections to the data, to themselves, and to where they want it to go, and then the light bulb <laughs> sort of goes off, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, and so that's the, you know, that's the thing, that's yeah. the work. Yeah. Yeah. So today we are lifting up the importance of building a culture of belonging. Yes. What are some of the things that help foster a sense of belonging? Hmm. So belonging. Um, so what's belonging about, right? Belonging is about being heard, being seen, being valued. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what belonging is about. Um, am I able to be in a space where I don't have to leave 90% of myself yeah. outside the door in order to enter. That's what belonging is about. Um, how do you do that? Uh, if I'm a leader, it's important for me to make sure that everyone, regardless of what I look like, is, feels like you're part of the team, right? Um, it's important for me to ask about each person um, and to actually listen, give you my full attention. Yeah. These things are important, right? It's important for us to ask team members to give input, and for me to actually listen to that. It's important for me to show trust. Um, and it is important for me to also share my story. Yeah. It's important so that it's clear that I'm human because it's a we thing, right? Mm -hmm. We're in this together. And I think that when we're thinking about cultural belonging, um, leadership is the most important thing as a leader we need to be uh, intentional and committed about creating spaces for people, uh, people of color, people who are not part of the dominant uh, language or the dominant culture, for women, depending on what the space looks like. 
Absolutely. Yes. You know, you just described the I uh, in yeah. DEI, yes. and which is inclusion. And when you talk about leadership, I just actually, through some of your comments, I think about courageous leadership yeah. uh, because that's what it takes. Yes. You know, uh, you, I, I think of myself oftentimes, and I'm sure you can relate, and, you know, a lot of women, uh, women of color, oftentimes we enter into a room knowing we will be the only one there. Amen. Okay? So you talk about having to <laughs> embrace courageous leadership, but what that really means to me um, is just really s standing up and, and being resilient, you yes. know, as you mentioned, and being consistent yes. and really just falling into who you are and, and taking your rightful place. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And going even if you're fearful. Yeah. Walking anyway, right? Exactly. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Digging a little deeper into you as a woman leader, mm -hmm. what would you say has helped you advance in, in leadership? You're asking me some tough questions, <laughs> madame. Um, <laughs> I mean, okay, so let's talk about, so I'll talk quickly about some of the qualities, right? Um, there are some things that will help us all along the way, right? If you have tenacity, if you, have, you work hard, you're disciplined. Uh, one thing that helps me is to be clear about what is for me um, and not what's for you, right? Uh, so being clear about what's for me. And, and there are three things um, in addition that are really important for me. Three things. The first one is it is important for me to have a connection to a higher power, a higher authority. That gives me the grace yes. which I often need to walk into the room, to walk through the room, to stay in the room, to do whatever it is that's necessary. Um, so I, uh, I'm clear that I need that and to connect to that on a daily basis too. I also get here, stay here, grow because of mentorship, right? And mentorship can really um, uh, you can get mentors from a lot of different places, right? Um, for me, a big piece of mentorship is a sisterhood of mentorship. Sisterhood of friends, sisterhood. I mean, right now, the room is filled right now with a whole bunch of women who came all this way just to be of support. Thank you, my friends, right? So these sisters, because of them, I can walk. In the room and know that if I fall, if I screw up, I've got somebody who can say, you know, it's going to be all right. Um, and that is real. Um, so my sisters, I also have um, men in my life who are, um, are good mentors. Um, I have an uncle who um, we called uncle, even though I had a, tons of uncles, because he was that guy who was a good example and a good mentor. Um, I have my husband who's been a good mentor to me, myself, Mr. Christopher Reynolds. <laughs> Smile, <laughs> love you. Um, so, you know, your mentors can come from a, a, a number of different places um, and we should uh, be clear about that. Um, the third place, um, so the first is a spiritual connection. The second for me is mentorship. And then the third is actually surprising to some people when I say it, but I get energy from young people. I get energy from young people. They make me want to do better. There's some young women um, who are working in Dallas, like Amber Sims and Jerry Bradley and Anisha Shropshire, young women who are doing work around equity who are so fierce. Oh, they make me want to do, they make me want to be good, yeah. right? They make me want to do good. There's some young people I know, like who are sitting here. Um, and who I know are out there in the webosphere, um, like Melissa, mm -hmm. Danissa, Carr Reynolds, like Austin Reynolds, like Quasi Reynolds, like I know a young woman near Blair Johnson. I know some young people who are amazing. They are doing it. They're killing it. Um, there's a young woman I know named Lavinia Reynolds. I mean, there are these young people who give me energy um, and I know a bunch of others because they're out there doing it. Um, and so they give me energy. So 
yeah. that's it, you know. Yeah. Those are the things that uh, influence. Um, influence me and want me to do better, want me to be better. And yeah. I think they create that new energy. They it's do. It's fresh. They do. <laughs> and they make me feel like, geez, let me tell you something, especially the young people, let me tell you, they make me feel like I'm really lucky that I was born when I was because if I had to compete with them, I would be in trouble. Right. Absolutely. I, I feel the same <laughs> way. You are not alone. <laughs> if I had to, I would be in trouble, uh, you know. So, so yeah. speaking of the, the next generation, what advice would you give uh, this generation of women who want to pursue their dream and leaders in their respective fields? Yes, um, I, and it's the same thing that I use for myself, right? Um, connect to a higher power, right? Um, and do that uh, daily. Create some kind of spiritual practice. And I am not going to tell you to do the same thing that works for me, right? Um, but what works for you? Connect to a higher power, have a daily practice. Yeah. Find some mentors and co-conspirators or collaborators, I don't care what you call them, but find some people who are doing, you know, what, so that you don't feel like you're on the road alone. And then find some mentors too and connect with them regularly because we don't do it by ourselves. I haven't done anything by myself, Absolutely. let's be clear. Um, Take care of yourself and do it daily. Take care of yourself and do it daily, daily, daily. And then maybe the final one is work at being clear about what is for you. It's really easy for us to see somebody else doing this, that, and that, and get, you know, like stressed about it or wanting to work at being clear at what is for you. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. <laughs> and let me tell you something, do it humbly, do it courageously, but pursue it with confidence and pursue it relentlessly. Yes. That's what I got to say for you. Great advice. Yes. Pursue and it. Great advice. <laughs> And our final question. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Ford, tell us what it means to you to be a recipient of this phenomenal award, the Mara Award, uh, Helping Women Award. What does that mean to you? Oh, man. Um, it's, it's really the, the highest honor. It really is. Um, ooh, I'm almost tearing up. Um, I'm trying not to do that. You know what? Um, uh, when I first came to uh, Texas, Dallas, uh, the Dallas, it was called the Dallas Women's Foundation. It was one of the first organizations that we, um, I, we supported um, because they're supporting women. Um, and, you know, we all know that when you support women, you're supporting everybody, right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, right? Um, and so to be honored by that organization um, I don't know that there could be um, a, a higher honor. And also, what a great opportunity for me, right? Mm -hmm. I am trying to make the effort to do a little bit myself. And I get the opportunity to say to everyone in the room, listen, I'm trying to do a little bit of work in the equity space, racial equity space, and I am going to ask every one of you within my voice, to dig into it, to learn more about it, to learn why it is important, to, to do some learning. And if it's uncomfortable, please do some more. Because if it's uncomfortable, it means you're growing. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling some discomfort, if you're feeling fearful, go towards it, OK? Yeah. So learn. Use your voice. We talked, I talked about that earlier, right? Use your voice. And that might mean that what you're doing is you're actually shutting up, being quiet and listening. That might be how you're using your voice. It might be that you're using your voice by um, creating the space for someone else to speak up because it's really someone else who needs to be in the room who doesn't have access to it that you're bringing along. Um, it might be that um, you are actually speaking up because you're sitting in the room and people are ignoring your colleagues who have something to say, but because of how they look, what they look like, they're not being heard. So you need to be that person to stand up. So what a great opportunity for me that Texas Women's Foundation has given me. Thank you so much for that. 
Um, I'm humbled by it. And so, of course, this is the highest, <laughs> highest honor. And I thank you for that question. Oh, no problem. Well, yes. Dr. Ford, thank you so much for joining me. And yes. I feel very honored to be sitting in this seat to interview you. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes. Any, if you have any questions, please feel free to go up to the mic there. Anybody? Do it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm in trouble. This is going to be a doozy. Yes. So, uh, my name is Austin. That's my mom up there. Oh boy. So, <laughs> what are some of the ways you've dealt with people or organizations that are resistant to change? Mm hmm. I knew it was going to be a hard one. Um, <laughs> thank you for that question. And I think that uh, one of the ways that I deal with that, so remember I talked about having a connection to a higher power? Um, I need to have grace. Um, I'm realizing uh, whenever we're dealing with um, resistance. We're going to get resistance wherever we go. And part of what you have to do is to understand that you're actually here for a reason. and so. I need to learn how to listen to what is, what is it that's causing the resistance and to hear it and then to do the best I can to speak to that. Mm -hmm. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> that was a good question. That was a good that question. That was a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? No. Great. Oh, yes. Go to the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I can come to you. <laughs> so I feel like, I don't feel like I know that we had a season where the nation's attention was really mm, wanting DE&I information post-George mm. Floyd. Yes. It seems like that ship has sailed, so to speak, in a lot of respects. And so how are we to keep the conversation going when DE&I is not as trendy, not as in as it was 18 months ago? And I think that's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, I think that the ship has not sailed. I don't agree with that, to be honest. I think that um, we're still in the moment where we can have the conversation. And I think that uh, Ms. LaTanya made a really good point that we're afraid. Um, we're there, uh, some of us are afraid. Um, some of us are um, a sort of back to our routine. I think that the large majority of us want to do what's right. And the question is, how do we do it? What's the approach? And I think that we simply need to find the right ways to have a conversation. And I think we can do that. And one of the ways that we do that is actually to, to talk about, well, OK, so what is it that we're trying to, to get to? We're trying to get to a space where everybody um, gets to participate. It works for everyone. Mm -hmm. If you're in a company, the, the data actually shows that inclusiveness creates uh, more room for creativity. It, it creates more uh, problem-solving skills. It actually is beneficial for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's going to help all of us. So uh, one of the ways for us to do that is to have the conversation in a way where we're holding uh, us, each of ourselves, accountable. But we're also valuing each, each other, right? Um, and I think that that's difficult to do, and I also think that it's important to do. Welcome. Dr. Ford, congratulations on Thank your you. award. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you. Yes. It has, uh, it's been on the news on critical race theory. Yes. Mm. You know, and um, sometimes I can't put my arms around it sure. and what the whole discussion and conversation is about sure. and why it's become so prominent. Sure. What are your thoughts on it? So I think that most people don't know what critical race theory is. I think that it's a whistle um, for us to shut down and not talk about race. Um, and I think that all of that is fear-driven. Um, our history is what it is. 
And so we can decide to, you know, I think I mentioned earlier that we can decide to use our history um, how we want to use our history. Mm -hmm. Our history is, and so, it, you know, if we want to use that term critical race theory as a dog whistle to not discuss, we are um, debilitating ourselves. Um, I think that it's important for us to find ways to just talk about our history and what it is and where it is that we want to go and why is it that we are so fearful about what is. Because what is and what has been doesn't tell us where we need to go, Absolutely. right? And I think that, that we need to focus on that more. We could be here for too long to talk about what critical race is race history actually means. So fairly complex uh, academic term. Mm -hmm. We don't need to spend time on that, but we do need to spend time on what is, is that's causing us to be like, yeah. you know, not wanting to discuss right. that we have had a complicated history and that we can move forward from. Thank you. You're welcome. We have Dr. Ford. Madam. I want to know about legacy. Legacy. You are so grounded and oh you are my. so thoughtful. Oh my. What do you want your legacy to be? Whew. <laughs> you ask me the toughest question. <laughs> I don't. I want to be, um, I want my grandmother to be proud of me. Mm -hmm. I, that's, that's what mm -hmm. I want, to be honest. My grandmother has passed and she said um, to me, a long time ago, um, you know, have respect for yourself and have respect for others and treat people well and treat others well. Mm -hmm. And I want her to be proud of me. And that's what I want to do. I'm sure that she is. Thank you. Thank you. She's smiling. Now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Ford. Madam. I'm Deborah Hunter Johnson. Yes. And I'm I on the board. I mentioned Blair Johnson earlier yeah. as a fantastic woman for us to watch out for. All right, thank you so much. You might know her. I have a question for you for our community. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes we need to have crucial conversations within our community of womanhood yeah. because sometimes we adopt the same microaggressions yes. and the same, we inflict the same pain on each other yes. mm. that the larger community does. We do. Do you yes. have any strategies for how we can broker those conversations without it feeling like sure. we're inflicting more pain on people yes. who feel victimized? Yes, mm. that is such a, Good question. Yes. Thank you so much for that question. So, you know, when we talk about racial inequality, there are two pieces to it, right? There are the, there's the piece of what um, the dominant culture does to us, mm -hmm. and then there's the piece of what we internalize and what we do to each other. Um, and I think it's a very hard conversation, and I think it's a conversation that we do have to have mm -hmm. because of um, the importance of us healing. It's a, it's a question about healing, to be honest. Um, and so how do we have it? We have it um, with sensitivity and with love um, and just respect and an understanding that it is there um, and understanding that it is not easy. Um, but I think that it's about healing and it's about um, you know, just, just knowing that this is part of our work as well. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Beautiful I question. One more, so go ahead. go ahead. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for yes. squeezing me in here. Um, you know, this is such a sensitive topic, yes, and where folks have sensitivity on both sides, yes. you know, of this discussion. I feel so much passion yes. from you and heart on this topic, and I'm just curious how you allowed yourself to lean into that passion and not be overly sensitive to those that may completely disagree with your perspective? Yes. Not easily. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think it's very, uh, it's taken a long time to learn. Um, and I had moments of total scared, oh, um, I'm not sure I can do this. I've walked into rooms where it feels so thick with um, 
I want to say hate, I, although I don't want to use that word so much because it's a strong word, but so, but so much emotion that was not receptive. And I think the part of our work is to still make the effort to walk forward anyway, right? Um, and to, courage is not about not being fearful, right? Courage is about being afraid and still going forward because it is important. Um, and, being, uh, and the thing of it is that um, the biggest piece of the work is to face myself, mm -hmm. right? So if it is possible for me to know that when we're talking about inequality, that I participate in it as well, and as Ms. Deborah Hunter Johnson said earlier, part of the work, right, is um, us, right, and us doing yeah. it to ourselves. Yeah. Have I been mm -hmm. um, one who has participated? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's all of us participate. Mm -hmm. uh, systems of inequality don't work if yeah. all of us don't hold it up, mm -hmm. right? That's all huge. of us are holding it up. Mm -hmm. And so if we are willing to face ourselves and face when we're a participant and be willing to go, all oh, right, I did that, um, then it becomes more and more possible. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. Such great questions. Mm, yes. Great conversation. Awesome. Very board, much Latanya. so. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you all for joining us today. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I hope y'all enjoyed this one. I know we could probably talk for hours. This is oh, one of my favorite could. topics. <laughs> yes. I love yes. it. So yes. I'm yes. so yes. happy yes. I get to be in this room with y'all. Yes. Um, so again, thank you, Dr. Ford. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Absolutely thank you. deserving of this. So thank you. Um, sure. our next forum starts at 5 p.m. And so I hope you join us for that next one, either in here or the other rooms. And also invite y'all to be <laughs> part of our um, celebration wall out there so write on that wall what has inspired you today what have you what words of wisdom you're taking away today and again thank you so much so.